Early in the morning, on an isolated beach near the Radama Islands, a group of fishermen led by Leon are getting ready to go out to sea. Their frail craft is caressed by the early morning breeze. The pirogue leaves in the direction of the Moromba Bay, where Leon knows he'll find what he's looking for. He moors his pirogue near to a small island of basaltic columns. The growing shortage of saleable fish has obliged Leon and his crew to convert themselves towards quite a different kind of catch. The Dinga Dingas in Malagasy are sea cucumbers. Other names used are Eshino de Mata, Beche de Mer, Sea Slug, or the Asian name Tripang. Bola brings up the first one, followed closely by the other fishermen who also catch several each. But the catch isn't very good despite the crew's many dives. Only one of the sea cucumbers brought up is a rare one and will earn them some money. The others will be sold accordingly to their weight. It's easy to notice on these once deserted islands a big increase in seasonal visitors. Today, these northwest islands shelter the modest housing of the fishermen's encampments. They have come to be closer to the natural habitat of their new catch. Mrs. Sowa's encampment is one of the most important. <laughs> The Malagasy capital has become the crossroads for the sea cucumber commerce. The Malagasy company Tajona is the exception that confirms the rule that the whole sea cucumber exploitation is run by the Chinese. In the factory yard, in front of the drying racks, the director explains. Sur les clés, il y a pas mal d'espèces de d'olotuli. Il y a les olotulis cabra, nobilis, le conera. Ils viennent un peu partout des côtes, du nord, de l'ouest et aussi du sud. Produit à peu près une soixantaine de tonnes dans l'année. Là, on exporte donc à Hong Kong et de Singapour et de la Chine. Le prix de trépan séché varie de 1 dollar jusqu'à 15, 20, 25 dollars le, le kilo. Si Ces cinq dernières années, donc, euh, la quantité qui était exportée était stable. Cette année, pour préserver et pour pérenniser la filière holoturie, nous, membres de l'ONET, on va proposer euh, à la direction de service de la pêche une fermeture annuelle de deux à trois mois. Including the north and west, the region of Tolia produces a large part of all the sea cucumbers caught. Chantal Conan and Professor Emerit from the Ecomar Laboratory at the Reunion Island University were among the first pioneer researchers to study the sea cucumbers. Appointed by Uyunsa, she is visiting Richard Resselofonurina, a researcher at the IHSM.
un projet MASMA régional de l'océan Indien regroupe cinq pays, parmi lesquels Madagascar joue un rôle important. Ce projet, les holothuries, une ressource peu connue, se base sur trois actions. Une étude des holothuries dans le milieu naturel au point de vue d'écologie. Le deuxième volet est l'étude de la reproduction. Et le troisième volet concerne l'aspect socio-économique. Puisque c'est une filière halieutique, le pêcheur, le collecteur, les différents intermédiaires sont des éléments essentiels pour permettre la rentabilité de la filière et comprendre ses caractéristiques. Mes travaux de recherche consistent surtout à la reproduction des holothuries, donc étude de la reproduction en milieu naturel et aussi pour l'aquaculture. Nous avons trouvé une technique pour pouvoir avoir une fécondation pendant toute l'année. La suite du travail consiste à l'élevage de larvaire qui se fait ici dans l'éclosurie. Ensuite, de transférer les juvéniles dans une autre ferme, dans des bassins de pré-grossissement, avant de les transférer en milieu naturel dans des enclos. The high consumption of sea cucumbers in Asia has caused an important increase in the demand. Thus, with the appearance of this new resource, the coastal populations in countries like Madagascar have seen a considerable increase in their incomes. Over the last 10 years, this intensive fishing has shrunk the population in the countries in the occidental part of the Indian Ocean, endangering the major role played by the sea cucumbers in the marine ecosystems. These sea cleaners swallow organic sediments and rubbish created by the coral reefs. In the Aqualab laboratory, their survival is at stake. Gaëtan is participating in the hatching and the process of the growing out of the larva. The tubs have to be regularly drained and cleaned. The larva, having been recuperated by the filtering of the water with sieves, have to be put back into regularly renewed seawater. Ici, nous sommes dans une salle d'élevage de, de concombres de mer. Donc ici, c'est une pièce pour le stockage des géniteurs et aussi à côté, les salles d'élevage larvaire. Pour les géniteurs, on les stocke d'abord ici, dans les toboggans, avant de faire la fécondation artificielle. Donc ici, nous avons des géniteurs de l'espèce Holothuria scabra. Elle fait 20 cm à peu près, mais la taille maximale pourrait atteindre jusqu'à 30-35 cm. Et là, vous en avez une dizaine Oui, c'est une dizaine qu'il faut avoir pour provoquer la ponte. Mais il y en a d'autres qui sont stockés dans le milieu naturel. L'élevage larvaire se fait à côté, dans les bacs que vous voyez ici. Inonatoni euh, Gaëtan Euh, ici, c'est une pièce pour l'élevage larvaire. Un bac peut contenir jusqu'à 100 000 larves. Et puis après la fécondation, ça reste à peu près trois semaines avant de devenir des petits juvéniles. Ici, il reste encore le dirnepo, où il y a des larves, à peu près 60 000 larves euh, euh, là-dedans. Ah oui. Vous pouvez voir. Tous les larves, ils sont, elles sont au stade auricularia, à peu près deux semaines après la fécondation. On va le remettre dans le bac. Aqualab is today a forerunner. Richard and his team have just taken out a patent to protect their unique and original method for the reproduction of Holoturia scabra in a laboratory. Richard continues his visit with Marion Pinot of the IRD. With the IHSM, she's working towards the creation of sea ranches in the coastal villages to the north of Tolia. The studies led here on microscopic unicellular seaweeds must be able to optimize the sea cucumber's growth. The Holoturia scabra was chosen for its strong cell value, its capacity to grow in shallow waters, and to reproduce all year round.
The final objective of the work done by the IHSM, by Richard and his team, is to implant sea ranches there where there are the most fishermen. They would allow, he hopes, for less samples to be taken from the sea as the intensive fishing endangers the marine ecosystem of the Barrier Reef. One of the projects should see the light of day at Ankilibi, a very important fishing village that has grown considerably over the last few years. This growth is partly due to the exodus of many rural families towards the coast, families that used to be able to live from the land, which has now become sterile. Richard has come there to meet one of his investigators, Jean Cri. He finds him at the village collector's house, which is also a bar and a supermarket. The collector's daughter gives the current prices of the different species. Just ten years ago, only four different types of sea cucumbers were caught, the sandfish and the black teat fish having the best yield. Those days are over. Richard has noticed that the fishermen catch anything and everything, even the cucumbers that have practically no sale value. Most of the time, these tripang, brought here by the bucketful, find no buyers with the big collectors. The salt comes from the local salt marsh. The evisceration can begin. To assure a good conservation, the sea cucumber has to be emptied and salted before the arrival of the main collector. It's generally he who treats the product. As far as the eye can see, the Tolia Lagoon in front of Ankili Bay offers a huge fishing area, protected by the big reef. In this late afternoon, the pirogues are arriving from all directions. The incessant coming and going will last until the end of the day, unloading the catch, the nets and the material, before bringing the boats to the top of the beach. They're not lacking in things to do.
Those who stayed at shore come to give a helping hand to the fishermen, to help with the carrying. All the women are present to collect the sea cucumbers. It's them, and only them, who will negotiate with the collectors. The negotiations are tense. This game generally has the same winners. Richard arrives back from his visit with the certitude that his approach could be an alternative to the enormous pressure exerted on the sea cucumber population. The resource wouldn't survive much longer being so intensively exploited. The town of Tulia has a modern port that can welcome today, in deep waters, heavily loaded cargo ships as well as oil tankers and other tankers. Next to these big ships, others, smaller and more rustic, converge from the surrounding shores bringing harvests and catches from all over the area. Access to the sea is vital in this region where land communications are often very impractical. It's by the sea that Richard plans to transport the future production of trepang from the sea ranches situated the furthest away. Away from the port, many small boats are laid on the sand of the rocky platform so as to avoid paying the port taxes. An incessant coming and going of carts pulled by Zebu unload the goods and deliver them directly to the town shops. It's nearby to this economical heart that Richard meets Claude, an important local collector. Odi! Odi! Oh! Wow. Ha, salam, salam, Mr. Claude. Salam, salam. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Salam. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ah. Ndeni the Bilaza site was chosen to establish the experimental aquaculture farm run by Aqualab. For this project, the IHSM laboratory received financial help from the Belgian universities of Brussels and Mons. On the site, trainees and employees of the IHSM work in teams to ensure an around-the-clock presence and to secure the parks. Mm -hmm. 
After having negotiated with the collector, Richard is satisfied with the way things have turned out. He meets up again with Gaëtan and Pascal, who are working in the growing out pools. Coming back to the parks, on an area of 1,250 square meters, 11 pens of different sizes are home to thousands of sandfish, who will reach their full adult size in a few weeks. Gaëtan and Pascal start by checking the nets, which can sometimes be damaged by the high tide. Then they get rid of predators, such as crabs and shellfish. They can now put the juveniles collected this morning back into the growing out pools. For Richard, the Belaza farm is a successful outcome of many long years of research. The IHSM, with the support of the Wyomsa and the financial help from Belgium, is going to be able to establish many production units in coastal villages all around Tolia, and why not, in the future, all around Madagascar. This project represents a huge hope for the sea cucumber business. The Holodurian culture will ensure a constant production and by consequence will bring a regular salary to the populations living exclusively from fishing. As for the farmers that have been driven away from their lands by the drought, they will be able to farm the sea. The preservation of sea cucumbers, an essential link in the ecological chain of coral reefs, necessitates a rigorous resource management, supervision of the catching, creation of marine reserves, development of the aquaculture. It's at this price that the fragile balance that still remains will be able to continue throughout time. Mm -hmm.